Hi, I'm Keith Cooper from North Light Images and uh, in this video and an accompanying video about colour management I'm going to look at printing greetings cards on the Epson ET8550. Now I've done several other videos about printing greetings cards with test images and various things like that um, and essentially if the printer supports um, paper of the right sort and I'm using photo speed pre-cut pre photo cards here. These have got creases on them so they fold and they come with envelopes. Now um, these are from a UK supplier but uh, people supply uh, such materials all over the place. Don't use plain card, it will look awful. So you need cards that specifically for inkjet printers. But anyway, as I said, normally I'll print something and literally it is a matter of getting the correct layout in whatever software you use. Now I've used Photoshop for an example, but uh, it's just because I happen to use it, you could use others. But really it is no different than printing an image on some art materials, folding it up, putting it in, you know, and turning it into a card. So what am I going to do different this time? Well, first up, this particular uh, paper is Platinum Etching 285. Now it happens to be a fine art uh, paper that I've used for prints before but I don't have a profile for it. So first of all I'm going to make a profile for this and I would say that uh, my profiles are available on request for non-commercial use. Um, so, But remember profiles need to be made for the particular paper that you're using. So a profile here will only work for this particular paper. Uh, you'll need another one, but I'll very quickly go through the process of making a profile since this is not a color management special and Then I'm also going to use the scanner on the 8550 in a color managed way to produce Output that I can print now the color management and the scanning side of it. I'll cover in a separate video uh, since uh, I really want this bit to just show the bit about how to make high quality prints. Why do I want to make some prints like this? Well, I have a watercolour here from a friend of mine that I want to turn into cards. And in doing that, I want to faithfully represent the colours here and the subtlety in the colours. And I'm not sure how this will look on video, but I want the cards, and this is on a watercolour paper, so hence why I'm choosing a paper like this. I want the cards to have a look that they've been painted. Now, it's quite a tricky thing. Um, I'm not going to go into a great details of the colour management side of things, since I've written lots of articles about that. Uh, colour management is something that I'm afraid comes across far better in a written article. I'll cover the outline of what I'm doing, but if you want the technical details, either ask a question or have a look at one of the articles I've written, because the articles always go into the detail of it that you really can't include easily in a video. But anyway, First of all, before we even do a scan or anything, I need to do some prints and make uh, some test images to do the create the profile. So I'll just do that now. To create a profile, I need two A4 sheets. Um, you can make profiles from a single sheet, but I prefer to use two sheets for A4 or a single sheet of A3+. But anyway, um, what I've got here, I'm using the Mac ColorSync utility. There is a free Adobe utility also for printing targets, but um, I've set the media type to Velvet Fine Art and size to A4. But the important thing when printing targets, and this is if you're getting targets, uh, if you're getting um, printing targets to have profiles made for you, that you print them with no color management. Have it turned off. Now this has a print has color target option, so I'll just go print. Now I've set the paper size, paper type here, um, the A4 sheets, I would say if you're unsure of which side is the side to print on, just lightly moisten your finger and dab it on the corner and it will feel slightly tacky on the print side, it will feel different to the other side. 
As you see, the card loads perfectly well and uh, it's just going to print that target. Um, I've got uh, two sheets because I want lots of patches. I want to make good quality target. Is the first sheet coming out. Um, why am I making colour profiles for this? Surely I've got similar papers. Well, turns out the ET8550 is a very good printer. But the ink set it has with a pigment black and a dye black means it behaves quite differently on different paper types. Now that's not just a simple paper type between uh, gloss and luster or gloss and matte and art papers. Even on different papers, which I'd all put in the art category, the actual gamut or range of colours you can get from it and the blackness you can get out of it vary quite considerably. Now that means that for optimal results with this printer, and as I said, it can give very good results, you do need to use a profile that matches. Now hopefully uh, paper suppliers will offer profiling uh, for this and will offer profiles created for this particular printer. But if you want colour accuracy and colour quality, you do need to use a profile for it. Hopefully, this bit, nobody should need to do this. Um, I will be doing some uh, videos about colour profile making, but I appreciate that this is way beyond what most people will probably need. Someone else will do this bit for you, but I wanted to include it in here to show you part of the process of getting a high-end picture and reproduced on a printer like this. Uh, because although there are only six inks in here and two of those are black, there's a grey and the cyan, magenta, yellow. It's capable of very interesting results um, and I know with the ink tags in it a lot of people are looking at this printer for a bit more than just casual office use and printing out the odd few snaps. But um, there's the first uh, uh, profile, uh, target. Now I'm going to let this dry, I'm going to print the second one I've set the paper size, it's Velvet Fine Art. That's the only fine art media setting on this printer, so whatever this paper is, it goes under Velvet Fine Art. Um, so there we go, we'll close that. It's set for A4. I'm just going to print the second one. I've uh, set the second target off for uh, printing. And these are the uh, little coloured patches that um, the spec photometer I've got, which is um, quite a high-end one, which allows me to just feed this strip in and uh, create profiles, uh, will actually measure the detailed colour of each of these little patches on this and the second sheet there, do some maths and then produce a profile. That's all a profile is. So if you want profiles making your materials, ideally ask the people who sell you the paper. Uh, if they've got profiles, that, to my mind, is a plus for them. And a lot of companies will, they'll sell you paper and then they'll let you print this out, you send it off to them and they email you back a profile. It's as simple as that. Profile is just a simple file that goes on your computer that tells the printing system about the characteristics of the paper, the printer, the ink, whatever. So we'll just let this second one print. Comes the second sheet. And uh, the colours are nice and bright. You can tell a lot about how a paper is going to work just with, with experience, just by looking at these colours of sheets like this. And uh, one of the things you can do, you can see whether the ink is running or anything like that, or with any patterns which indicate the wrong level of ink. With a printer like this, I've had to use the VFA uh, media setting. There is no subtlety with the media setting for this. It's the fine art setting, and that's the one you get to use. With higher end printers, with more inks on them than that, you'll get a choice of media settings, and they change the amount of ink that's laid down on that, and they make a slight difference. But I'm sure if you're just interested in printing cards, um, this is probably not the bit you're interested in. But, 
What I am interested in is seeing these rich colours. Now I'm hoping they'll show up on the video here. You can see it's being split and we have some very nice colours. Um, so off to make a profile. I'll leave these to dry for a bit and uh, then make a profile. So I'll scan in both of these targets using the ISIS spectrophotometer. photometer. Uh, this data then goes into I1 Profiler and I create the profiles from it. Um, as you can see, it takes a while to scan in the bits of paper, but uh, making profiles is quite an easy process. So I have all my colour management sorted out. Um, I now have the original that I want to scan. One of the problems of scanning an image like this is that it's a textured surface paper. Now that means that unfortunately the print is slightly too wide to fit the scanner glass. So I might be tempted to just notice that there's very little image at the top end here so I can let that overlap and we'll put that and we'll scan just the bottom and we'll get the main part of the image. That's fine, but for the fact that the slight gap where the paper rides up over this little lid here, the edge here, um, will change the lighting on the paper. And with a paper with texture like this, that will produce a shading effect, which we don't really want, because we don't want to emphasise the paper, if possible, in scanning this. Um, some aspects of the paper we do want to capture, but we don't want to show shading and the like. So what I'll need to do to use this scanner is to take one scan with the paper like that, and then another scan with this lower edge overlapping here and those need to be combined in software now I'll use Photoshop because I use it all the time but you could use Affinity Photo even Photoshop elements will let you merge images like this but the whole idea is that when you scan them you scan it at the absolute highest quality so that 1200 dots per inch is the scanning a physical scanning resolution of this scanner. So I'll scan it at 1200. There's no point in scanning it at any higher resolution. Uh, that's being generated by software. So I'll do two scans of this uh, top and bottom. Now I can use the Epson scan software. Now the Epson scan software, if I turn off color management and turn off um, any corrections or anything it tries to do for you and just get it to save it as a TIFF file, a TIFF -F, TIF file at the highest possible quality settings. Um, I don't want it to do the printer or the, uh, the, sorry, the scanner or the software to do anything to the raw scan data. I'm going to have to process that later from two separate scans. Now, normally I would use ViewScan for this. Um, uh, the Epson scan software is great in that it allows you to do raw scans that I can then apply my profile to to get accurate color and it works very well. However, I would actually use ViewScan for this because it, it generally gets an awful lot more detail and quality out of scanners. The scan, Epson software is good. Don't get me wrong, it's worth using, but ViewScan, if you're serious about scanning, is something to get. It's widely supported, it's not very expensive, um, it supports loads and loads of printers, and scanners, I should say. Um, scanners built into printers even. But I've got an old film scanner, it works with it. I've got an old, big, flatbed scanner that's 20 years old. Perfectly good scanner, it works with ViewScan. But for this, if you want, use the Epson software if you must. Um, but I would always say use ViewScan, by far and away the better. But anyway, I will just put this down and I will do two scans of this and then join it and create the image. Now, once I've created the image, I'm going to open that up in Photoshop. Apart from the stitching, it needs relatively little work on it to get a source image. To actually print the, view, uh, the uh, greetings cards, I need to fit the image that I've got. 
I might want to add some text or something like that. That's another matter altogether. The idea is here that I'm going to just print using the image that I've scanned and the profile for the paper that I'm scanning, that I'm printing with. And uh, now I just need to go off to the computer. I can control this remotely. Uh, there's no need to scan to the uh, USB socket here. You can put memory sticks in. You put memory cards in and those will appear on the network. It's quite a neat printer like that. But uh, I just need to do some work and create some files to print here. So, I've now scanned the image, processed the image, and I've reduced its size, and I've fitted it onto a template I've made. Now, I'm going to have uh, more detail of this process in the written article that uh, will go along with this video. But essentially, I've uh, created a profile for the scanner, I've created a profile for the paper. I've worked in a large colour space with the image. I've tweaked it a little bit um, because scanning colours, particularly art pigments, can sometimes the hue can change a little bit, particularly the blue purple side where I've needed to alter that a little bit. And I've now got the image reduced in size, fitted to a template for printing as a card. Now I'm printing this from Photoshop because the borderless printing from Photoshop is a bit more accurate, needs a little less attention than using the Epson print layout. You can use the Epson print layout, particularly if you're uh, not printing borderless. Uh, it's worth experimenting with, but I'm just using Photoshop for this one, just for convenience. Now, have for uh, the uh, curl, it's, it, as I say, it's A4, folds down to A5, lots of other sizes. Once you've got your image in a good format, Scanned in at a very large size, reducing it down to fit it onto a card will sharpen it up and in general make it look just that little bit sharper and um, better edges. Um, it really can look quite nice. Um, you don't need any particular sharpening usually uh, because you're just taking the image that you'd produced as the original artwork. Anyway, just to make sure I'm printing this uh, on the right side, yeah that's slightly tacky there. I'll load a sheet up into this. Now I've got the profile made for this. It's all set up. It's installed on my system. Do note that if you get a profile, if you install the profile on your Mac, your PC, you need to restart the applications that you're going to use it. So uh, if I install a new profile, I have to restart Photoshop because otherwise Photoshop doesn't see the new profiles. It checks the profiles when it starts up. So we've got this, uh, we've got this set A4 Velvet Fine Art, as I say, that's the only fine art in, uh, setting um, on this particular printer. And I happen to know from other testing that uh, the inks here, it uses all the inks. So it uses the pigment ink black and the dye black to give better performance. It's also why I know that I need a custom profile for this. There are several types of profiles you can try, but if you get the wrong sort of profile on this fine art type media, you can get really bad looking results. But as I say, it has to be fine art. It has to be proper inkjet media. I'm going to actually put two sheets in this because I know that this feeds okay. Now, I'm just going to go over to the computer, fire it up and send the image here. Now I've uh, created a preset here that uh, in the in the print output that is uh, Velvet Fine Art A4 borderless and I'm going to just uh, use that for printing. I'm using uh, printing directly from Photoshop but this is an old version of Photoshop. This is CS6 so you could you know you could use something like Affinity Photo or anything but you do need to make some edits and so have a look at the um, article and I'll actually put more details about the edits I needed to go from the scanned image to the one you see here. Um, it can be quite simple it can need a bit of finessing but anyway we're going to print this I've scaled it now it's at 300 uh, pixels per inch more than enough for something like this and I'm going to set two copies and I'm going to print. Well, I'm now going to be waiting for 
the computer to send the information as Ali's already started making a noise and it'll draw it in fairly quickly. It doesn't print really quickly. You have to use the high quality setting on this media. It's not slow, uh, but it's uh, not going to be rapid. And I would say that if you're looking at producing lots of cards like this, there goes the first sheet, no problem with multiple sheet loading. I haven't tried it many more than this. It might take four or five sheets, okay, but you need to experiment with the media you're using and be prepared to give it a nudge because uh, it may not feed properly the thicker stuff. But this is fine, so no problem here. But um, when you're printing on uh, this sort of media, don't bend it or do anything before you print on it. The pre-crease here won't cause a problem. As I say, this is the uh, photo speed photo cards one. There are lots of others. This Platinum Etching 285. And um, it comes with envelopes as well. Now, the initial print comes out quite quickly because the driver is smart enough to know that there's a whole load of empty space apart from um, I've put artwork because uh, Fiona has uh, produced this I think it's going to have these as some cards to send out to people and uh, might as well have her name on the back of it. But as I was saying, if you're going to print many of these don't neglect to count for your own time. Now, I'm editing this video down a bit because I'm assuming that uh, people don't want to just watch pieces of card coming out of printers. Uh, but it takes a few minutes for each one. So, let's say you have an order for 100 cards. That's a lot of printing. That's a lot of time to be spent loading up. Now, the ink costs are going to be relatively low on this printer because of these ink tanks. But if you're doing stuff like this and you intend to make a business of it, do look at your total costs. Um, certainly, to my mind, if you're not counting your costs, it's a hobby that makes you some money. If you want it as a proper business, making cards and the like, then, well, you may need to consider a bit more than just the printer. But I've done some articles about the business side of photography which um, and selling prints, which in many ways apply just as well if you're selling sort of craft items and things like this. Now, this happens to be uh, watercolour, and um, I've tested this one, and it looks good. If you're doing other types of artwork, check whether the paper or the card is suitable. And as I've said many times before, use a test image. There's one available. See the article for my other videos about making cards. And don't use cheap card. If you use cheap card that isn't meant for inkjet printing, you will get rubbish results. If you're going to be printing many of these, have something else to do as well. Um, if you're printing it from one computer, yeah. Um, I don't mind doing the odd print or two, but if somebody orders a hundred prints, I'm going to charge them for my time as well. And I'm going to suggest that if you're running a business, you ought to charge people for your time as well. Well, there we go. There's the first one. There's the card. And it looks very nice. So, here is the original watercolour. It's on a watercolour paper. Now, the texture of this caused a little bit of issue in scanning because it's picked up. Um, you might want to try photographing artwork rather than scanning it. Just depends on the artwork and how it's lit. But there is the card made from it. Now I'm hoping that this will look fairly similar um, on the video and uh, certainly to my eye under this lighting very similar. This one's just a little bit crisper but then that's because it's reduced in size. So we have the original and we have the copy on a nice slightly textured paper. There we go, there's the second one. I could have loaded up a few more sheets and printed a few more, but that'll have to wait to Christmas. 
Um, so there you have it. Um, scanning an artwork, making greetings cards with the ET8550. Hope these videos are of use. Um, I say do check the written articles as well because there's far more detail I can include on that. Notes about the scanning, notes about profiling and different things like that. There's a lot more detail I can include in the written articles that would be tedious and difficult to show in videos. So um, please do subscribe to the channel if you're interested. Ask questions and or drop me an email. Happy to answer questions on it. So um, thanks very much.